Hey guys, it's Kelly. I am back with another process video. I was watching someone's video on YouTube and I don't remember who, so I'm sorry that I can't give you credit. But as I was watching, I realized that I had never used my Distress inks for a background. And so the next time that I had a chance to actually sit down and make a page, I decided that I was going to uh, get messy with my inks and have some fun. So what I'm doing is just, uh, you know, stamping the ink on a package and putting a little water and it is just a beautiful color. It, this would be perfect for a water page and it's not a water page. But anyway, um, in between the colors I did dry it with my heat tool because I did not want the colors to blend. Um, I think this is a Mermaid Lagoon and Cracked Pistachio but I will have all the details on my blog. And this was just really fun and I uh, very easy and you know this is great for someone who has inks but doesn't have a lot of mixed media uh, things they can dabble with this and see if they like it so again I just smushed a little ink on my mat and added some water just so I could have some of the uh, splatters of color going around the page and I did walk away from it and let it dry um, Today, uh, I think, you know, the kids were home and I was busy doing some stuff, so I was able to, you know, come back and forth to the layout and just let it dry. So I'm taking this uh, Teresa Collins stencil and just putting just a little bit of modeling paste on it. And I chose the triangle stencil because I am using the Amy Tangerine papers and it has somewhat of a geometric shape on a couple of the papers in her collection. So I thought that by using the triangles, it would just, you know, further complement the papers that I was deciding to use. So I do um, try to make sure that I don't have a like straight line of the triangles. I like it to um, be a little bit more random. And so that's why you see me picking up the stencil and moving it quite a bit. So this is one of my favorite papers for this collection and I knew that I wanted to, you know, use it on this page in some form and I'm trying to decide how I'm going to mat these photos. These photos were not taken by me. Um, there's some volunteers at band camp and they take pictures. So when I was able to find my son in the pictures, I, you know, printed or saved them from Shutterfly and ordered them. So while they're not something that I would have necessarily, um, you know, chosen myself, I would have, of course, tried to get more close-ups or just a different shots, you know, when it's not you, the way you usually take it. But I was just so happy to have the pictures. So you can see what I'm doing. I only have like this little strip of paper left and to make it look like one long piece, I cut it into three pieces and then just put it underneath the photos. And these stamps I'm using are from Ellie Studio and I had not used these and wanted to use these for a title and I thought this would be a perfect page to do so. So I am using archival ink uh, with this because I do know that I want to go back in and add some color to the letters after I'm done. And at this point I'm just trying to get them, you know, lined up fairly straight. And usually I would just, you know, uh, stamp each letter down by itself, but I felt like these were close enough to where I wouldn't be able to do much better, so I just left them on the block like they were. So I did decide that I wanted to mount the two photos on the right hand side as well just to bring further weight to those photos. There's not really one clear, uh, I guess, focal point on this and, you know, it's, again, like I said, they're not photos that I would have taken, but at least, you know, now my son will have this memory of band camp and, you know, can just look at these pictures and hopefully jot some or, you know, it'll bring some memories back from him. So I do decide to put the main photo, the one that I'm thinking is the main photo, as um, 
on the left hand side and I'm putting pop dots or the foam tape underneath just so that it gives it a little bit of a lift. Out of all the pictures, I liked this one the best because you could see the movement and what they were doing and I just thought that it was, um, you know, a pretty cool picture. So I am bringing in some embellishments from the kit. These are all from the Amy Tan uh, die cut that came with the kit. And um, I love the way these die cuts um, just look on the page. I wasn't necessarily going to bring in another color with the craft, but it just works so well that um, I decided to go ahead and do it. So because this is um, pattern paper and I'm going to be lining it up, I wanted to make sure that I got it straight. And one of the reasons I love this mat is that I can use it to help guide where I'm putting uh, my photos or, you know, paper. And, um, you know, for some things it doesn't matter so much, but when you're having something that has lines and you want it to make it look like a straight line, I just find that it's very easy to get it very cattywampus and I just find it better for my little type A personality just to do it that way. So like I said, you know, I come back to this layout uh, several times just because, you know, we're in the middle of doing some stuff. And at this point, I'm really liking the way that the page is starting to come together. And I know that I want to start getting things stuck down. So I put a little bit of foam tape underneath that die cut, but I only did it on one part on the um, left hand side of the die cut because you don't need to stick it under the entire die cut because it's resting on top of the photo. And I just wanted it to look flat. And by doing it on that left hand side, it gives that illusion. So I did decide to um, pull out the washi tape booklet. I did not get the add-on kit with this, but I did order a few of the things that I really wanted in this. I thought a little bit of blue twine would make that tag look better. I usually like to put the reinforcers on the tag just to give it a more finished look, but this hole was so close up to the top and I just didn't think that it would look right. So I am um, deciding to tear this washi tape. That's something that I have seen Missy Widden do and I really like it. And um, it, the torn edges on this layout really do have a nicer appeal for me. And um, it also helps me to stretch uh, the use of the washi tape, especially with that color, because that was one of my um, favorite colors of this tape. So I knew that I had that one arrow on the top uh, die cut and I wanted to see if I could get anything else on the page like in the form of an arrow and I saw this on the die cut sheet and I was a little nervous about putting it on but it worked beautifully except for the little piece that just stuck to my finger. So you'll see I just went into my stash and pulled out two different blue pens and when I combined the two different inks you couldn't even tell that part of it did not go down. So when I came back again, I was looking at the layout and I thought that it needed something to frame it. And I didn't necessarily want to cut down the edges and mat it on cardstock like I would normally do. So I just took two really thin strips of pattern paper and decided to put one at the top and one on the bottom. And along with that, I would also do another torn strip of the washi tape and just thought that that would bring that pretty blue um, around the page a little bit more. So I am um, really excited with this kit. This has probably one, been one of my favorite kits with the Hip Kit Club. Um, just because it has been so inspiring. Like I've just really wanted to get multiple layouts done with it. And I'm gonna have to force myself to either finish it or you know, start on my October kit pretty quickly because I don't wanna get too behind in my kits. And I still have some layouts that I haven't done 
with the summer kits. So I decide that I want to go ahead and ink in the title and what I'm trying to do is figure out which color or make my own color. The ink is several different shades over the whole title. You can see some of it's darker blue and then some of it has more of a greenish tint. And what I wanted is something that would um, look good over the entire title. I didn't want to do multicolor letters on the title. I just wanted to be able to get one ink color that would look good across the entire uh, you know, set of letters. And I ended up just mixing a little bit of the two colors together and you know it's one of those things that you just play with it until you get the color that you like and um, make sure you have enough of it because I don't know that you know it's if you are a perfectionist I don't know that you could get that exact color again. You could get close. So I just uh, let them dry and it dries pretty quickly because there isn't you know you're not taking a huge bit of the ink on it and then I just went over it a couple of times and I decided to um, use the cues from the die cuts and bring some stars in on the page and I'm playing move the star around and um, at one point you know you just want to like smack your hand stop it just put the you know stars down stop playing with them leave it glue them down you know it's funny, I, I like watch myself and think, oh, good grief, this is not, you know, brain surgery. Just put it down. So I think at this point, I finally decide that I am going to just, you know, get them glued down on the page so I can stop playing with them. When I watch other people's videos, it seems like they know exactly where they want to put them. And I just, you know, don't know why I can't be like that. So I'm looking at this and I decide that I haven't done enough stamping and that I want to use these Felicity Jane stamps that um, I purchased over the summer when they were on sale. And they turned out to be the perfect little addition and I'm so pleased with the way that they looked on the layout and I will say that you know, I've never gotten a kit from Felicity Jane, although I would love to be a member. And, um, you know, this is the first thing that I've really gotten from that company. And the stamps are wonderful. They are just, they stamp beautifully. And um, I just couldn't say enough good things about them. So the last thing I'm going to be stamping is this little curly Q arrow. And I liked the way that it tied the die cut to the title. So that's pretty much it for this layout. Thanks so much for hanging out with me today. And if you like it, if you don't mind, give me a thumbs up. I surely appreciate it. Have a good day.